A long time, a very long time since you've seen my beautiful, amazing face. I'm not gonna give you a ton of excuses. Point blank, I've just been adulting, okay? Uh, my birthday just passed in September, so I didn't get to spend my birthday with you guys, which I was very sad about. I have some adulting to do, you know what I mean? I know a lot of you think I'm like 16 years old, but uh, I am grown, so I had some things to do. I'm here posting now somewhat consistently again, so let's enjoy the time we have. Today's tutorial, we're doing a soft style transition tutorial. I just did one before I vanished off the face of the earth on here, but I want to do a part two because there are some things that I miss and I think that this is such a lovely style and I love doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you at the end before you guys get into the actual like learning process. I have to play our lovely commercial that we haven't seen in so long. Hello there. Like most editors, I have a pay hip. Now, granted, most of the things on my pay hip I already have tutorials on my YouTube channel for. However, if you're lazy or just want to support me, I have a numerous amount of resources and presets on my pay hip. That includes my popular glitch style pack, my shake pack, and even colorings, plus more. If the prices are too much for you, you are not obligated to buy it. But if you do, thank you so much and enjoy. Hi guys, welcome to the tutorial part of this video. I am happy to see you guys again, it's been forever. Okay, so these are some example edits of what we're gonna be learning today. As always, I know that I don't do anything special in my edits. I preach it literally every time I post a tutorial, but I am just showing you what I do for my edits and what works for me. And hopefully that this like somehow speaks to you and you can like learn from this and yeah. Okay, first thing we're gonna be learning is this little heart pop transition. This transition is so cute. I I mainly use this one on like my birthday edits. I should honestly use it more often, but here we have my base. I always start with this. It's a zoom out with brightness or exposure, depending on what you want. I've said multiple times, I think brightness and exposure look very different to me. So it just depends on what you want to do. I'm strictly only going to be saying what's important. So if you're a beginner, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, so we have this little heart PNG. It may be in the description or you can just look it up. There's like tons of heart PNGs. I promise you this is not special. So we have it here and we're going to chop it or split it, whatever, in between both of your clips. And if you want this heart to be a different color, now's the time to add tint. You may, I mean, you could do it later, but you know, I would just do it now because it's convenient. Okay, now I'm getting a solid and I'm making it white. You're gonna put this under the second layer of the heart, like the second clip where the heart is. Okay, and then you're gonna cut it down and we're just gonna make it alpha silhouette. I set that backwards, but you know what I mean? Okay, and then it's gonna look like this after you pre-compose. If you're like confused, you have to pre-compose. Also note that when I put tint on this, literally copy and paste the same color, for some reason the tint comes out really lightly. I don't know why it does that. It's so annoying. Just know you may have to edit your tint to look a little darker than it is. Like it just makes it look lighter than it. You know what I mean? Okay, I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Enable scale. And then for your first keyframe, you're making it to where they can't see the heart at all. So you're scaling it down. And then for the second keyframe, you're gonna scale it all the way up until all they see is just blue. Also, it may not obviously be blue for you. I meant like to where they're just seeing the big heart. Heart. And this is the graph. And oh my goodness, this looks so pretty and nice. Don't forget to put on motion blur because I always forget. Now we're going to deal with the second piece of the heart. Go inside the pre comp and size it down to like 20 to 40. Scale that. This is the first keyframe at 100. And then make it zoom. You can either make it zoom all the way out to where they can't see the heart or make it that the heart is still there. But you're going to have to edit your picture or clip to make sure that they can still like the clip matches the heart you know what i mean like you don't want the heart covering their faces so do do what you will with that and then here i'm just doing my graph and honestly hate doing graphs and this is how it turned out i honestly love it once again don't forget to put on motion blur i honestly love this transition it's cute okay next transition is going to be a little bit of a slide pop-up thing going on so you'll need three clips and i'm pre-composing them here for the first clip you want it to go into a slide so shift x from 0 to 1080 if you're using blurmo curves and then here i'm just doing my graph i love doing slides they're so fun to me and on the second clip i'm finishing that slide so negative 1080 to zero are my settings with blowmo curves after that um i hate doing this i hate using polaroid camera 
little picture frame PNGs. Every time I do this, I like wrestle with the fact that it doesn't fit completely. Here is an exception. I had like no hard time because the picture was perfectly square, but usually I like wrestle with like the frame and the size. Anyway, get the picture frame PNG with the Polaroid. You should just go Polaroid picture PNG and it should come up. Get it aligned and you're just gonna want it to zoom down. You know what I mean? So shift Y, make sure you can't see it on the first keyframe and then the second keyframe, you're gonna just pull it down so it's in the middle of the clip and then do your graph. I need to get like the flow plugin or something so I don't have to keep doing this every time. This is what we have so far. And actually, we're basically almost done, but there's one more thing I wanna add, which is tint. So pick your color, right? Push OK, and then go to, well, actually, let me edit it some more because I'm indecisive. Mm -hmm. and then go to amount tint, put the first keyframe to zero, and then go towards where the slide down is at and make it 100. So that it just turns pink slowly as the last transition is coming up. And then this is the result of that. I like it. I mean, it could be better. Always remember that this could be better. This is just me, okay? Everything you do can be way 10 times better okay now i'm adding optic compensation because i like for my zoom outs to look flowy and warpy with these granted i still did not do a good job i was like kind of over this tutorial i'm not gonna lie but this is how it came out and i think it's still pretty so but let's just say you're not a fan of the slide down you want to do something else to portray and reveal the third pick. So I'm gonna go back in here and we're gonna show you like a little cute pop-up shake that I do. So enable scale and your first keyframe is gonna be from 10 to 12. Move over six, five to six frames and make it between 110 and 115. Move over six to seven frames again. Make that about 90 to 93. Move over six frames again, make it 104. Move over seven frames and make it 100 so each time you're moving between five to eight frames this is how it'll look i love this way more than the slide like way more this is so much cuter now copy and paste those settings or make a preset because we're gonna need those for multiple pictures for this one so you're gonna want to get all your clips or pictures and align them up like this i'm editing them a lot but the basis is that there's gonna be three pictures that are gonna pop up in this one big picture do you know what i mean so make them how you want them to lay out and look and then i'm also using rotation and making them like rotate in opposite ways depending on the picture and then we're just going to pre-compose all of them one by one and then we're also going to add drop shadow for drop shadow settings it's really going to depend on you i mess with them I, like each time i don't really know i don't like when my drop shadow looks too tacky which i think i made it really tacky here but whatever the next thing is you're gonna want to basically like align them to pop up at different times i can't really explain it but this is like looking at it i hope you can understand what i mean then i pasted the shake pop-ups that we did to each one individually now i'm going to show you the doodle so you want to get a black solid and then select the paint tool and double click now from here you're just going to paint or draw whatever you want i'm bad so don't mind this remember do better than me and then go into this little arrow and until you see brushes and then you see the stroke options that is when you want to mess with the start keyframe it and mess with it until you get it to where it's just like drawing you know what i mean you're gonna copy and paste that to each each stroke or however many you did i hope that makes sense and then put turbulent displace on it which i have like so many tutorials on once again add drop shadow mine looks tacky here and i hate it like drop down any good drop shadow settings please i would actually love you forever then i put my zooms on it i don't like how it turned out completely but this is how it looked and honestly it is good enough if my like 100 advice for this is to put on warp like you want it to warp out and also do optic compensation in the beginning um, I think this would look way better, but I didn't feel like doing that. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you can look at Warp Out tutorials, and there's a lot on YouTube. You can go back to 4K camera quality Tati, because that's the end of the tutorial. So how was the tutorial? <laughs> She's a little rusty because it's been a while, but I will make sure to let her know. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy. This is my Instagram. This is my backup TikTok. These are all my socials. If you want to reach out to me in any type of way, that's where you can do it at. Love you guys so much. Please forgive me for being gone for so long. And okay, love you. Bye.